of a Donnybrook there with, with Rob Lazio, the center. And you can see just at the top of your screen, a couple rights, a couple yep. lefts, going to the chin. And those are, yes, sir. call those offsetting. They'll call it second and goal from the five. Lewis into the second, read it, drop. Garrett McIntyre with the sack. That's number nine on the year for McIntyre. Late flag in the corner of the end zone, Chris. Whoa. Yeah, and it was it was after the rub. Henry Burris, he wanted to look to the left side of the formation, the short side of the field. And he was trying to get a little bit of a rub there to get Robbie Bryant open. Paul Johnson heated up about the call. The guy who got the sack, Garrett McIntyre, wants to know exactly what this penalty is because he does a nice job working inside on Stanley Bryant. Illegal contact on a receiver. Hamilton, number 28. Half the distance of the goal, first down. And it was Jamal Johnson. Yeah, he was part of that, that short side of the field where they were trying to rub, and he tried to jam his way through it. Flag came out way, way late. So it's first and goal. Just outside the two. Bunch formation to this near side. That's the side Rivers takes. Touchdown. Oh wait, no call. And the ball popped loose. And let's see, one play was whistled down. Boy, he looked like he was right at that plane. Yeah, I'd like to see another look on that. It looked like he broke the plane, but then the football came out. And where are they going to spot it? They're like putting it back on the three. Yep. Let's, let's take a look because he looked like he was real close to that goal line. In fact, well, no, he, you're right. Came up inches short. I'm wondering. Then the ball seemed to pop. That's what I was going to say. Contact and was it out on contact or out after he was down by contact? Because that's a difference of two yards. And Challenge flag yeah. comes up from John Huffnagel. Yeah, I think they're going to take a look at it. At, at least he wants to get back down to the one yard line. But on the goal line, that two yards is like two miles. And I think John Updegel wants to see if, if Joffrey Reynolds wasn't down by contact here. Yep. He's not challenging whether or not he scored. He wants to see where that ball is placed and would like those two yards back. And he may win this one because it looked initially like the ball came out after Reynolds had been down. That yep. he's, he's down there, looked like he still had it. Then it kicked around a little bit. Then it squirts out of there and bounces back those two yards. Calgary is challenging the ruling on the field of a fumble. And you're right, it's a different, different play, second and one or second and three. While they're doing this, let's show you that holding call by Jamal Johnson, the linebacker who's right there. He's lined at the wide out spot on Rob Cote, the fullback who's come out. Now he jams right there to try and avoid the rub and then hangs on just for a step too long. That was the penalty to put it down on the goal line. Joffrey Reynolds gets pushed back and now we've got the challenge. But it looked to me on the angles we showed you that Joffrey Reynolds is down by contact there. His knee was on the ground. After review, Calgary's challenge has been upheld. Player was down with contact inside the one. The ball will be placed at the one yard line. It will be second down. Fumbles used to be an issue for Joffrey Reynolds. He has not lost a fumble this year. And a good challenge by John Huffnagel means it'll be Placed at the one second and goal. Yeah, it, no, it's a good challenge. Like I mentioned, that that two yards is it feels like a long way when you're down on the goal line. And I thought that left knee was down, and it was, and, and they've made the right call here. 
Boutin is in, slides off the right side. Oh. And does he get in? Otis Boyd's got him wrapped in the former stamp, drills him back. Teat lost a helmet, and it's like he's losing his cool, too, as things heat up in the trenches. Defensive line for Hamilton stood their men up. They got leverage and got lower than the O-line, so that allowed Otis Floyd to be able to step in there. Real good surge from the Hamilton defensive line, and this is all about who gets lowest. And because Drew Tate got turned sideways by Otis Floyd, he could never get that ball across to cross the plane. This might give you an even better look. Helmet might have got there, but not the football. And nope, the official right on the spot. Gene Patterson, the umpire, right on the goal line. A couple of late changes for the Tie Cats on defense here. And it'll go back to the one yard line, even if True Tate got a few more inches in there. And you can see the ball was back. A little bit. Stevie Bags grabs at the football. He's had a few fumble recoveries. In fact, a couple for touchdowns. He's trying to pull it out. Officials came to the sidelines and not sure why the delay, but uh, Kim Murphy and his crew ready to go now as he whistles play in, and it's going to be third and one. And who wants it more? Tycats looking for a good wide stand. Take the head. And this time he's in a Calvary touchdown. And this time Drew Tate doesn't take a step laterally and then hit it off his guard or tackle. This time he just takes the ball and goes straight ahead. Well, we've still got some shine going on down here as tempers flare. Drew Tate celebrates his fifth touchdown of the year. That first time he went a bit to his right laterally. This time he takes the snap and follows Rob Lazio, goes right in behind him, and he is well across that line. Well, it looked like as the stamp started to celebrate, there was a potential for a fight to break out. Things are heating up here in the stamps. Regain their 10 point lead. Did he fire off and get low on that one? Ball bouncing, and this time it is McDaniel. And Northway McDaniel bounces forward across the 30 to the 32. Remember, I mentioned all about leverage in the, in the offensive or defensive line and who gets lower. Well, there's Rob Lazio right there in the center. Watch how he gets low. The Thai Cats are going to bring in offensive lineman Brian Ramsey to help out the big men get a big body inside. He gets a little high and loses his leverage, and that's when big Rob Lazio just pushes him through, and Drew Tate follows his center in for the touchdown. And boy, every Calgary Stampeder congratulated Rob Lazio on the bench when he came over there. Here's Dave Stalla taking that pass out of the backfield. And Stalla up to the 38-yard line. Touchdown catch of the game and five yards on that grab. And the Calgary Stampeders in their defense have been as dominant as they've been all year. They've, they've now sort of lost that points allowed title that they held for pretty much the entire season. Hamilton took that recently. Fewest points allowed by Hamilton. By, by any defense in the CFL. And Chris Jones is starting to change things up, get matchups in his secondary. He got caught in that first quarter one time. Double tight end formation, second and five. Protection and the crosser is snuck right out as Maurice Mann has his first catch. That's the eighth completion of the game for Kevin Glenn. They're going to have to kick, but Glenn is now the all-time completion leader for a single season in Hamilton Tie Cat history. Danny McManus in 99, Tom Clements 82. So he's ticked a couple of record boxes here tonight. Tally, nice stutter step and 
finally dropped at the 46, 15 yards on the return. Production John Huffnagle was looking for. Back to McMahon and back to the sidelines and Sir Orleski. Chris, the Stamps are two and four in their last six games and in each of those four losses, we saw little of running back Joffrey Reynolds. In fact, he had fewer than 10 carries in each of those four losses, including four carries for eight yards last week against BC. Henry Burris said they know how frustrated Joffrey was after last week and it's been verbalized by John Huffnagel and Dave Dickinson that they need to establish the line early and get Joffrey involved. It doesn't matter what success they have through the air. They know the bread and butter of this offense is on the ground. And so far tonight, four carries, five yards for Reynolds. There's a catch for Kenyon Rambo. And it's about opportunities, too. And, and in those two wins over the last six games, Dave Dickinson was calling an average of 13 and a half running plays to job for Reynolds or John Cornish. And in the four losses in those six games, that number dropped to just over six carries per game so he got he has to have the opportunity last week he was fourth among Calgary rushers and here he is on second and short and the second surge by Reynolds second effort gets the first down but Burris Cornish Andrew Tate all had more rushing yards than Joffrey Reynolds last week against BC well combined he and Cornish had just nine for 50 nine carries from the backfield and I know it's a passing league and People talk about that, but you know, it's a mentality. Running the football becomes a mentality. You can really dominate the line if you can, as Sarah mentioned, attack the line of scrimmage, dominate the line of scrimmage, get your running back involved now. Boy, the whole playbook opens up for you because you use play action, you use bootleg, everything else comes together. Ball across midfield at the Hamilton 53, first down, and here's Reynolds and Boy, they've got the wall up tonight, don't they? Toss back down. Jamal Johnson, the tackle. Third in the league in tackles. Coming in with 85. Take a look at the last six games for Joffrey Reynolds. 52, 260 yards, three touchdowns. But see that five-yard average. So beyond the, the big game against Saskatchewan, yards hard to come by now. Six carries eight yards here in the first half second and ten and Burris delivers McLewis the catch and he's able to move forward to get the first down at the Hampton 40 yard line Nick Lewis moved the chains to Calgary Stampeders and a sheer tackle by Hamilton because Lewis has made people miss like this more than not. Go back to that Joffrey Reynolds side just one more time. You know, Joffrey Reynolds, when you break up his numbers in those losses and wins over the last six games, boy, it's, it's amazing how different they are. First and ten, here comes Dylan Barker. Safety blitz! And Burris got away! Throws the long out and it's incomplete, but number one does a good job to avoid the sack. This, this is what will jump off the page for you. Last four games, they lost two, they won two. Look at the difference in yardage and carries. Opportunities for Joffrey Reynolds in the losses and the wins. Night and day. Second and ten. Reynolds in behind Burris. Now he releases. Burris shakes off. The initial pressure, Nick Lewis first down. Once again, Nick Lewis moves the chains. Yeah, and that's back-to-back -back plays that Henry Burris has avoided the rush. First it was Dylan Barker on a blitz. This time it's going to be Stevie Bags. They're only going to rush three of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but again, Burris has to work around it. He has to buy some time, get outside of that pocket. Then he finds Nick Lewis and without even looking yeah. at Nick Lewis, a no-look throw to the outside to get it to him. Well, you know you're on top of your game as a quarterback when you don't have to look at the receiver when you throw it to him. Drive continues. 
Fake to Reynolds. Lewis can't make the acrobatic catch. Uh, and he kept that one alive just long enough that Jerome Dennis had a chance at it. Ball thrown high. He has to go up there and get it with the one hand. Now he keeps it alive. Jerome Dennis is closing. And he almost had a chance. You know, it's a chicken and egg debate here in Calgary. Mm -hmm. Who's the MOP? Is it the quarterback who gets the receiver the football? Or the receiver who's made so many clutch catches this year and seems to be the pulse of the team? That pass for Franklin incomplete. And that's the first one that is off for really back-to-back -back plays here for Henry Burris. He's looked pretty good in the first quarter. And, and that no-look pass just sick but comes back with two throws that he wants back that high one to Nick Lewis and he had RJ Franklin over the middle and just missed him there and you know 87 anxious to atone for his drop last week in the late stages of the loss against BC Maber comes on he's hit from 30 and now surveys a 33 yard attempt and Rob Maber drills that as the Stamps increase their lead. Introducing Rona Advantages. Take advantage and get more out of Rona. Save money. Up to 5% on all your purchases for the year.